When BC NDP leader John Horgan arrived at Troy's Grill in Asuyas on Saturday, he brought with him a box of apples. I thought it would be a peace offering. Suitable, perhaps, because he was there to talk about education. So I wanted to come and uh, have a chat largely about education funding, but about any issues that anybody wanted to throw on the table and, and go from there. The NDP now sees Boundary Similkameen as a riding they can win in the provincial election in May next year, and they're spending a lot of time here. The BC Liberal government and MLA Linda Larson were widely blamed for the decision to close Osuya Secondary School, even though they came through with funding at the 11th hour to keep the school open. Oh, I, I absolutely believe Boundary Similkameen is a winnable riding. Uh, Princeton has been added to the constituency with the redistribution. Uh, that it leans to us normally. But with every election, you have to earn the respect and, the, and the, the votes of people in a community. I think for too long, political parties, particularly the BC Liberals, have taken that for granted. They've assumed that communities like Asuyas uh, and Oliver are going to vote liberal. I don't think they can make that assumption any longer and the education issue highlights that. We've been driving people to private education because we've been starving public education and what happened in this community was absolutely extraordinary and I want to commend you particularly but everybody who just rose up and said no that's not going to happen here so good on you all and my emissary Rob Fleming um, the spokesperson for education within our group uh, I've set, uh, sent up several times and he came back each time so encouraged by what was happening here on the ground and when you're in opposition and you're throwing rocks every day and you're turning over rocks every day and you're trying to expose the shortcomings of the government, uh, when you have a community that rises up the way you, you did here, it's really, really extraordinary and you should really commend yourself for that because it's, it's happening, it happened in, in Summerland, it happened in Quenelle. It's ha it happened on Vancouver Island in, in Comox. Getting 900 to 1,000 people out to public meetings, that's significant in a community of this size. And the government ignored the concerns, they ignored the hard work that the school district was doing, literally threw them under the bus. And the consequence of that, I think, will be felt in the next election come May 2017. They believe that after the election, they can spend three years of, of uh, destruction of services to people and then in the last 12 months, sprinkle change fairy around. Dust. Fairy dust. Fairy yeah. dust. <laughs> and, and they're not going to get away with it. They're not going to get away with it here. They're not going to get away with it in Quenelle. They're not going to get away with it in Kamloops. For those who know me, you know that keeping Asuya Secondary School open for business was my number one priority. And that's why I'm pleased to say today that Asuya Secondary will be receiving the full 490 yeah. Despite the money that Larson announced on June 30th, the day that Asuya Secondary was scheduled to close, the NDP sees her as vulnerable on education. Horgan also criticizes her for seeming to be insensitive about the legacy of residential schools for First Nations and for being out of touch on the National Park issue. Well, certainly my colleague Rob Fleming, our education spokesperson, has been to the community several times. He's been my lead on the education question, and he has found Linda's participation in that issue to be wanting, and as has the community. What really struck me as, uh, as uh, unconscionable was Linda's comments about residential schools at a meeting as a representative of the government of British Columbia. Uh, her lack of understanding of the consequences to First Nations peoples was really shocking. I was at a, a gathering of elders from across British Columbia in Williams Lake when she made those comments and people were horrified and I, I think that insensitivity to significant issues, cultural issues, is something that uh, MLAs should not be exposed to. They should not make mistakes like that. Uh, it, she may have those personal views, but she should keep those to herself. And to make public utterances like that was a big mistake. Larson has been a staunch opponent of a national park in the South Okanagan, although her government now seems open to a smaller park. 
Well, that's another issue where I think Linda Larson has dropped the ball. I think that the overwhelming sentiment in this community is if we're going to be a tourism-driven economy with a strong agricultural base, we need to add and complement the attractions that will bring people to the South Okanagan, and a national park would do just that. I haven't met too many people that are opposed to it. In fact, everybody that I talk to thinks it's a good idea. I think it's long overdue. Let's get this thing done. But before the NDP can think about winning the riding, they have to have a candidate. Although some have mused about running, they don't have one yet and won't before the fall. Well, it's nice that Linda has given, all, given us all this yeah, yeah, yeah. ammunition. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's really almost, the school it's board, the national park <laughs> issue. She's really yeah. dropped the ball on both First those Nations issues. And, uh, no, and, and the First Nations. Yeah. Well, I'm talking to everybody. Uh, the Riding Association makes the final decision on who will be the candidate for this area, but I've been talking to prominent citizens, I've been talking to prominent members of the NDP, and I think we want to get the best candidate possible to represent this area. And our challenge will be to make sure that the public has a good grasp of the shortcomings of the current government and they have a better understanding of what we would do differently. And I intend to do that over the next nine months, is to be in as many places as humanly possible, talking to people about the issues that are important to them. I believe that the time is ripe for a victory here for my political party, but I have to work every day to earn the trust and respect of voters and getting out into communities, talking to people, meeting with them firsthand. That's the kind of politics that I like. I'm a, I'm a guy that likes to wade into a crowd of people. I'm not uncomfortable having conversations about just about anything, but it's more important to listen than to talk, I think, at this stage of the game, and that's what I've been doing. I've been listening to people so that when I put forward my platform in the coming campaign, it will reflect what I've heard from people, not what I think is best for them. And that's the difference between me and Christy Clark. I think that everything has a shelf life, and I think that the arrogance of the BC Liberals that's reached its apex and the public is tired of a government that believes that it's always right, that it believes that they can do anything and get away with it. We saw that in the federal election. Mr. Harper was dispatched quite aggressively by the voters of Canada, also particularly by the voters here in British Columbia. New Democrats increased seats here in the last federal election. New Democrats increased seats uh, in other parts of Canada. But you need to reflect the values of the people that elected you. And Linda's not done that in this riding. And that's why I believe that if we work hard and we put forward uh, a platform that reflects the values of the people of the South Okanagan, we'll be successful here. The boundary country has always been strong NDP territory. And the boundary Similkaming now, I believe, is is ripe, if I could say, at, at the height of, uh, of tree fruit season, is ripe for the picking. And, and we're going to do our level best to win this seat. This is Richard McGuire, Digital Editor with the Asuyas Times and Aberdeen Publishing.